What's up, gang? Joel here with Primo's MMA, and this is a UFC 282 Rapid Reactions video. Let's get into it. Let's share the screen here. Boom. Boom. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Let's talk about the prelim fight, the featured prelim, Raul Rosas Jr. de Mexico versus Jay Perrin. These guys, I believe they've trained together in the past. Man, how about 18-year-old senior in high school, Raul Rosas Jr. Gets it done in round one at 2 minutes and 44 seconds. He makes it look so easy in there. Passed the test with flying colors. Uh, one of the best sound bites was uh, Raul saying, I'm here to take the trash out for Dana White. Oh, I'm not throwing shade at Jay Perrin. I respect all fighters, everyone in the UFC, even the amateur fighters in the regional rate, uh, scene. I have respect for anybody that walks into the cage into a mixed martial arts fight. But nonetheless, um, Raul gets it done, shows his class, lands nine of 14 significant strikes to Jay Perrin's only four three of those being significant strikes, two of three on takedowns, and he gets the submission. The UFC has got a real star here with Raul Rosas Jr., super popular in New Mexico and in all of Latin America and in the U.S. as well. I'm very curious to see where they book this kid, what they do with him next. Super exciting fighter. And Jay Perrin, who knows, don't really know much about him. Hopefully they'll give him another chance to compete. But yeah, this was the story of this was uh this was the Raul Rosas Jr. coming out party, a featured prelim on a UFC uh, pay per view, quite the spot to be in to begin your career, and he passes the test with flying colors at 18. Wow, the sky is the limit for this kid. Super exciting, and he's a fighter that we're definitely gonna be watching out for moving forward. All right, to the main card we go. <laughs> What a start to the main card. A lot of hype behind this fight. Um, this was expected to be the fight of the night. It did deliver, and when I think about it, it probably was the most entertaining fight of the night. So, it, yeah, it definitely got the nod there. We got Bryce Mitchell, Thug Nasty versus Ilya Toporia. Man, Ilya Toporia looked really good against a tough Bryce Mitchell. 53 to uh, total strikes landed to Bryce's 46. A significant advantage on the stand-up just watching the fight. He was having his way, walking Bryce down the whole fight. Look at the takedowns by Bryce, only one of nine. Ilya stuffing every takedown, and when it was his turn to get him on the ground, able to take him down, submit him, gets the submission in round two at three minutes and ten seconds. Man. For him to do that to Bryce Mitchell, who has looked so good in his past few fights, this Elia is the real deal. And that scuffle he had with Patty, well, that could be interesting down the road. This guy, he looks like a real uh, top five featherweight, potentially. Um, I'm very curious to see who he fights next. He says he wants Brian Ortega. Does he get Brian Ortega? Remains to be seen. Brian's coming. Uh, he's got an. He's had an injury in his last fight against uh, against. Um, the Panther, I forget his name now. Uh, gosh, what's his name? He's a top, top featherweight a Mexican fighter. Um, Yair, Yair, Yair Hernandez. So, yeah, there's that. Bryce Mitchell, where does he go from here? Um, probably just gonna have to fight down in the rankings now. Curious to see where he's gonna be. He was ranked nine going into this, but yeah, Ilya is the story of this fight. Still undefeated, 13-0, looking like he could potentially be a top five UFC featherweight. And now, the second fight of the night, Darren the Gorilla Till. Man, such a letdown, such a promising career versus Dracus Duplessis. Darren just kind of launched into the UFC when he first got going. A lot of big wins over Donald Cerrone, Darren Till. Um, I'm sorry, not Darren Till. Steven Wonderboy Thompson, you know, a win over Gastelum at 185 in his debut. But now to see him lose again, I think that's three in a row. Even had a good fight against Robert Whitaker. I think the story of Darren's career, he's going to be 30 on Christmas, is injuries. The shoulder injury, the shoulder surgery, the ACL tear last year. And now he did tell uh, Bruce Buffer that he tore his ACL before the fight or during the fight. He told him. He told Bruce after the fight that he tore his ACL last night. Dracus Duplessis, man, that guy's a train. 
117 total strikes, 86 significant strikes. In the stand-up, Darren had the advantage. Darren was picking him apart, landing his shots. That left hand was there. But Dre Coos, relentless, 6 of 6, taking Darren down at will. I don't think Darren's ever had the best grappling or takedown defense in general. He's primarily a Muay Thai fighter, and he's really good. And he still looked really good with the striking last night. The injury that happened, I think it happened in the first round. I uh, feel sorry for Darren, man. He's such a great uh, star, you know, very popular in England. Um, very interesting to see where he goes from here at 30 after all those injuries. He might have to hang it up. And then you got Dracus Duplessis. Man, that guy's on a tear. He's going to be in the top 10 after uh, this week. Who 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 could we match him up with? You know, I sh I should have been I should have actually looked at that, but um, let me look right now. Actually, let me look right now. Who do we got in the middleweight? Well, there's Jack Hermanson. He's ranked number nine. That could potentially be the fight. Um, and Andre Munez could be the fight. Kelvin Gastelum. A lot of good, interesting opponents, but I think some of these guys are booked, but they're going to be fighting soon. Darren Till, you know, hey. Uh, man, not sure. Maybe Chris Curtis, if Darren wants to take another fight, but he might be out for another year if he does come back. But let's look at featherweight. Let's let's uh let's dial it back for a second because we were just. I want to talk about the featherweights. You look here. You got Thug Nasty Bryce Mitchell. You got Eli Taporia. Eli Taporia will definitely be number nine after this. Man, there's fights there. There's the Korean Zombie. There's Calvin uh, Qatar. Yair Rodriguez, there he is. I forgot your name earlier. My bad, man. Brian Ortega. He says he wants Brian Ortega. That might be a good comeback fight for Brian. He's kind of Brian's already fought in some of these guys here, and uh, that could be a big one for both of those men. A very, very uh, interesting matchup there. So that could be next for him. Bryce Mitchell. There's a Dan potentially Dan Ige. Um, there's Jonathan Pierce. There's S Sadiq. Um, there's, uh, you know, he's going to have to fight down and try to build his way up. It was a tough loss, tough night for Bryce, but let's go back. Let's go back. Ooh, that, that, that welterweight fight, or it was a catch weight at 180 pounds. Alex Morano, mad respect, took the fight on short notice against Santiago Ponzanibio. Ponzanibio, 30 and six. He's got a pretty darn good record. Never really broken into the top 10 fringe top 15 guy was booked to fight Lawler. It didn't go down. Morano and him, they do the darn thing. Morano was winning this fight through two and a half rounds until that TKO or that knockout, that big shot that Santiago landed. Uh, man, Morano was on his way to win a decision and on short notice. No shame for Morano for taking this fight and competing so well against a tough Ponzinibbio. Everybody knows how tough Santiago Ponzinibbio is. So 66 significant strikes for uh, for Santiago, 38 for uh Alex, zero of one takedowns. So when I'm looking at the strikes, it seems like Santiago might have won the decision based on that. But watching the fight yesterday, it looked like Morano was having his way in the stand-up and his shots were more damaging. And I think he did almost finish Santiago at one moment. So there's that. But who do these guys fight next? Who do we match these guys up next with? So Morano, again, I don't think he's going to get a ranked fight. And Santiago's actually not even ranked. But when you look at welterweight, I could see him getting a fight with Rodriguez next, Michelle Pareda, even, even maybe Michael Chiesa potentially. Santiago, he again, he was just ranked last year in the top 15. So that could be something to look forward to there. And now we go to the controversial co-main. I did a video on this, just talking about this, so I won't get into it too much. I rewatched the fight. I can see why the judges gave it to Patty. The first two rounds were very close. Round three, not much happened, guys. Kind of a boring round. Gordon held him up against the cage for three minutes. He did get a takedown, but not a mu not much damage done at all. Patty out uh, has more significant strikes. Five uh, five more to to Gordon's. Ninety seven total strikes landed for Patty. One hundred for Gordon. Close fight, controversy all around it. The word robbery is going to be linked to this fight forever. But, hey, it is what it is, man. It's MMA. And these two, they were very equally matched. We look at the rankings for them. What's next? Um, 
Let's just talk about what's next for Patty at 155. All killers, all killers. I do think Patty's going to have another fight. Another, His next fight will be against an unranked guy, and then he'll fight into the top 15. I think uh, the guy I said was Claudio Poyes, who we saw last open the main card against Dan Hooker. He got TKO into a body kick, a great uh, gra- submission skills. He's had He won five in a row previously. I think that's the next step up. In competition for Patty, a good fight, a big fight for both of them. So two fringe guys, top twenty, right there outside the top fifteen. Let them brawl it out for to see who gets to fight in the into the rankings next. That would be the fight to make. Uh, Patty versus Claudio. And now to the main event: Big Jan Blachowicz, Polish power versus Magomed Ankalaev. Wow, such a lackluster ending, guys. We have a draw. It's a draw. These two threw down for 25 total minutes for it to be a tie. Tough, tough, tough. Look at the total strikes. 79 by uh, 79 strikes landed by Jan. 191 strikes by Magomed. 78 significant strikes. Two of 10 on takedowns. 20%. I didn't even realize he shot that many takedowns. But Jan, he did get 55 significant strikes. Look, Jan, Jan fought a good fight. Jan was staying in his range. He was not engaging in that firefight, getting in trouble in the pocket with Magomed. He's Magomed has got crazy knockout power. Jan was fighting his fight, picking his shots. The leg kicks were money. He invested in those leg kicks. That was paying off big. You saw Magomed compromised in round two and in round three because of those leg kicks. So Jan had a great strategy for him. Very tough fight. The fifth, the halfway through the fourth round. And the fifth round, I think Magomed had 11 minutes of ground control time. So he, and then the fifth round was total domination by Magomed, had him on the ground, controlling him the entire fifth round. So again, a lot of uh, action in this fight. Very controversial. This card was controversial. The decision, the judging on this card will go down as a very, very controversial um, ending. And we still don't have a champion. We still don't have a light heavyweight champion, but breaking news, guys, and I know some of you guys already know this. Dana White, he took the some he took a bad thing and he made it a good thing because now we have a new main event for UFC 283. That's right, Glover Teixeira versus J uh Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill for the light heavyweight title. So. For the second pay per view in a row, the light heavyweight title will be on the line. Kind of a tough situation. Hey. I think the winner of that, Magomed, should fight. Magomed deserves a title shot. Kind of uh, tough for Jan, but even Jan said the belt should be Magomed's. So there's that, guys. Anyways, yeah, that's that was basically it. That was the um, last pay-per-view of 2022 uh, for the UFC. We do have a fight night, Cannoneer versus Strickland. Leave a like, leave a comment, uh, subscribe. Let me know if you guys want me to do a quick breakdown on this this week. I will. We can talk about this this fight night card. Very interesting card. Cannoneer, Strickland, Sarukian versus Demir Ismagulov. That's those are two great fights right there. You got uh Bruce Leroy, Alice Caceres fighting, Drew Dober, Bobby Green. A lot of sneaky good fights on that one to close out the year. So yeah, you guys let me know if you want me to uh break that one down. Thank you guys for listening. We really do appreciate it. Um, Yeah, again, please subscribe if you haven't already. We're breaking down the, the biggest fights in the UFC and all the and other uh, promotions as well. Southeast regional scene and one championship, Bellator. We can talk about all of it, you know. But nonetheless, this was my reaction video. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate it. And we'll be back. Peace.